Hello and welcome back to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome, of course, to the Come and Go Charger where we start all of our highway range tests. And this time we have the, yes, I know, super ugly, at least in the front, BMW iX M60. As usual, I'm charging the car up to 100% state of charge. We're then gonna head out on I-25, up to Cheyenne, over into Nebraska, flip around and come back in a loop style, 70 mile per hour, highway loop style test, of course, at the constant speed. So conditions today are pretty good for the test. I'm really curious to see how far this car will go because just in my predictions of driving it the last couple days, this thing just keeps going and going. We're talking deep into the 300 mile range and maybe even 400 miles around town if I'm driving it easy. So let's see how far it goes in our typical test. <laughs> This is, of course, the brand new BMW iX M60. And maybe I should spare you this view up here. I know that's sort of played out by now, but I have to say every other detail on this car, truly amazing. I'm loving the back of this thing. Look at these tail lights here. The camera doesn't quite pick them up. It has this sort of effect, but up close, really nice fades. The, the M60 is what BMW calls the best of I, X, and M. And if you're not familiar with BMW language, BMW i is all of the electric models, BMW X are all of the SUVs or SAV, sport activity vehicle in this case. That's how they launched the X5 SAV back in the E53 generation all those years ago. Still one of the best cars BMW's ever made. And M, which is their performance division. Now this isn't a true M car, although I don't think BMW will ever have sort of a iX M. I think the M60 will be as spicy as it gets. One cool feature, by the way, just to show you, I love this. This is how you fill it up with washer fluid. The front hood doesn't open, so this is a much more elegant solution to what Mercedes does with that little side flapper on EQS and EQS SUV. Now, yeah, speaking of EQS SUV, main competitors for this car are the EQS SUV, the Audi e-tron, and the Tesla Model X, all of which we've driven and made videos with on this channel. The EQS SUV actually has a global launch here in Denver this week. And so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it. I may have to be somewhere else, but I would love to get our e-tron, the EQS, a Model X and this car all together for a quick comparison. Anyway, we'll see. This is the first thing I'm doing with this iX. It's a brand new car. It has less than 500 miles on it. A huge shout out to BMW for literally getting a brand new car, running it through a couple tests just to make sure the software works, make sure the drivetrain works. There's no creaks or rattles. They always do that before they drop off the car for review, of course. And then uh, just giving it to us with, you know, about 300 miles on it. So a huge thanks to them for getting us a fresh car for battery testing. So let's talk about the testing procedures today. The testing procedures today are basically going to be to fill up the high voltage battery here at a DC charger, which we always do. 111.5 kilowatt hour gross capacity, 105 point 505 point something usable. So basically we're gonna try and get all of that 105 out of it as best as we can. And um, your tire pressures are set to uh, manufacturer recommended. And yeah, we basically go out loop style and back. Warm day though, we're talking 95 degrees Fahrenheit out here. I'm gonna show you the electrochromatic roof on the inside, it's really cool. And that helps block some of the solar load on the vehicle, the thermal load that we'll have in the cabin. But we've seen some of the best ranges in these very hot temperatures. And I think this car is gonna do pretty well. Now on the BMW iX50, there's the 40, 50, and M60. In the US, we only get the 50 and M60. In the 50, you get the same battery pack, but a different rear motor. This actually has a dual inverter, six pole, M specific tuned rear motor. So very similar to EQS having that six phase rear motor, which can help with some efficiency, also with just smoothness of operation. And this is one of the quietest and most refined drive lines I've ever driven. Now I'm not totally convinced on the throttle tuning, but stay tuned because I'll a full in-depth driving review of this vehicle. It has rear axle steering, air suspension that will lower itself down at speed. And by the way, no permanent magnet motors here. These are two induction motors. So it can actually choose to run rear wheel drive or front wheel drive on the highway. And it can do that independently of me having to do anything. I'm just gonna load up the car, put it in efficiency mode, air suspension's gonna slam, and we're gonna do the test. 
Now I've been here for a little bit charging up. I pulled in with about 20% state of charge. One of the things I always do uh, before a range test is DC fast charge the car to full. The reason for that is in the winter time, we get everything up to temperature. In the summertime, we get everything down to temperature. DC fast charging, most electric cars sort of have a programmed in temperature window, which is quite warm, which is perfect for starting out the test. And that's why I DC charged the car. And we got people waving on the camera, so that's awesome. <laughs> Let me show you the inside because that's where this car is truly, truly stellar. I love the interior of this thing. And, um, you know, I'll have full reviews on everything. But one thing I will say, all these crystals, all these little buttons here, they just shine in your face and cause massive reflection. So you can even see it hitting the camera over here when I move around certain directions. But I'm not convinced. I think it looks really nice. Works great at nighttime during the day, not convinced with that. But take a look at the roof here. Right now I have it in this closed position, but I'm just gonna hit this little button and you'll watch it go, if I can hit the button properly. Why is it not going? Oh, I'm hitting the wrong one. It's this button and now the roof is totally open and now it's gonna close, boom, love that. It, it works better when you can actually see something overhead, but it really does a nice job. Porsche Taycan has this feature. You can see in terms of light weighting, carbon fiber reinforced polymer structure pieces throughout the vehicle, very similar to BMW i3. It really feels like BMW just took the time to engineer a serious vehicle, 400 volt system architecture, but a high 400 volt. BMW claims 195 kilowatt peak charging. We're gonna do all the charging tests on it, of course, but these chargers only give out 200 amps and on a low voltage car like this, a 400 volt pack, well, takes a while to charge. So I got the YouTube live stream guys going with me. I always live stream our range tests when possible on our out of spec motoring channel, which is our road tripping channel and, and for live streams with EVs. Um, we're doing not too badly, 67 kilowatts at almost 90%. That's really not bad. So I'm pleased with that. It took forever to get from 20% up to this way. And that's mostly because of the charger, not the car. You can see the car knows that's about what the charger can give. And here's the maximum it can take. I've never seen a display like this before, but it must have known that it was a 200 amp maximum charger and basically said, hey, that's the peak you're gonna get, but here's how much I can take and it's grayed out. Thought that was really good um, programming right there. Just under 500 miles on the thing. And just to show you a little bit of this iDrive system, by the way, there's a couple cool features that I like in iX. And the first is actually to do with the charging function. So if I go here to driving and then charging, you can see here, you can set your charging limit for AC power. You can set your charging target. BMW recommends an 80% charging target. And I would agree with only a five kilowatt hour buffer, less than 5% on this big battery pack, uh, you know, 105 usable at 111 gross. That makes sense. But take a look at this. You can adjust your fan loudness to restricted, for example, if it's hot and you don't want it to be loud in your garage, or unrestricted, which means get it to be, you know, cooled down as much as possible, regardless of NVH and noise. So I think that works pretty well. And then there goes my new friends in their Mustang Mach-E. Looks like they got rear-ended, oh no. But uh, nice people, they stayed here till about 95% state of charge. And I sort of explained to them like, hey, you don't really need to wait that long. Better to go to the next station and charge faster. So they're just getting into the out of spec lifestyle now. Anyway, we're gonna let this thing charge. It says it needs another 20 to 30 minutes or so to get up there from 90% to 100, we'll see. And uh, the car, even at 90% is predicting 244 miles, not even in efficiency mode. So I think we're gonna see a pretty big number here today. So let's talk numbers really quick and specifically wheel size and a few different things. By the way, still doing 60 kilowatts at 96%. That's not bad up top. Um, so there's the iX50, which is the same battery pack. And there are three wheel options for that car, 20, 21, and 22 inch wheels. The 20s are the arrows, it goes the farthest. I think it has a 330 mile EPA range. My friend Tom tested that car with very similar testing procedures and actually blew past the EPA range at 70 miles an hour highway and got 345 miles. This is the same platform, but with the larger rear motor, I assume, and also different tuning on the front motor, and then having the big 22 inch wheels. Uh, this car is rated, but actually before I even tell you what this car is rated for, in the iX50, the 21 inch wheels get less range than the 22 inch wheels. 
really weird. Don't know why that's the case. It must just be the arrow profile of the wheel or the tire selection, but it's the first time I think I've ever seen the largest wheel go farther than the next stop step up or step down. In the iX M60, that's not the case. There's 21 and 22 inch wheels available in the M60. The 21 inch wheels, the car is rated for 280 miles in the combined cycle. This one's rated for 274 miles. Doesn't sound like much. That's a huge drop from 330 miles of the iX50 on the aero wheels. I would be curious to see why that was the case. My guess is we're not going to be too far off. I think we're going to be seeing more than EPA, and I think we're going to see close to 300 miles, even with the 22-inch wheels here in the M60. That's my prediction, but we'll see. Time will tell. Well, we have a little bit of inception going on here with the live stream, guys, but let's take a look here. So uh, in terms of setup, I'm not going to run uh, air conditioned seats. We're going to run very low in automatic. There's also a balanced function versus a dynamic airflow. It sounds a bit louder, but I'm pretty sure this is just more on the face and the rest is more in the cabin. Uh, and I prefer to have direct airflow. We're at 99% state of charge. So let's make sure we are in efficient mode. We are, and the car will do all of its stuff. There's not much settings here other than efficient climate control and efficient visibility functions. This is like limiting the power of the heated mirrors and weird things like this. BMW goes crazy deep into this. I'm also going to make sure that my massaging seat is off. So seat massage off. Not that it's gonna really make much of a difference, but this is just how we run every car. Down to 32 kilowatts at 99%, it's 100 degrees outside, really toasty. I have the roof totally closed off. This might be a better way of showing you. There we go, now it's open and now it's closed. Yeah, you can definitely tell better from this angle here. And um, what else do we have to do for this thing? We have to reset our trip. So if I go here to live vehicle, that's not that one, whoops home this one live vehicle boom then i can go here to content it's a little bit in there and trip data boom and so this is since last charge this is since factory so this is it's only used 77 kilowatt hours to go 495 miles i don't buy that oh this is kind of cool that you can move that around okay but let's go here since individual and then let's reset individual. And I'll do that before we pull out as well, but now we're set. We also have 495 miles on the odometer and we are gonna GPS accurate, check our speed as well. BMWs typically read over slightly. So as soon as this hits 100 and kicks off the charger, we're gonna go. Charging just clicked off. So let's turn off climate control for now. There we go. Car's predicting 361 miles with climate control off. We'll unplug with not much parasitic loss uh, on the car. We'll reset the trip calculator, start back up the climate control, and we are good to go. It says it cost us zero dollars. I don't buy that at all, but that would be kind of cool. I've never had free charging here. So let's put this thing away. Oh, there we go. $43.58 to charge up to 100%. That's mostly because they charge by the kilowatt hour and the time if you're here long enough. Love these, by the way. Sorry for the wind. Those are the best. Okay, let's go. Well, we are in the car now, so let's hit the start button. Let's turn climate control on, uh, and we'll go very low on everything auto at 68. We're then going to hit our little shortcut by pushing this up and hitting trip data. And we are going to reset individual into drive. We'll go into one pedal driving just for now. And off we go then in the bmw ix a bit windy right here at the moment but where we're headed actually uh not windy at all so i think this is almost perfect conditions except for the temperature it's 100 degrees out right now but uh, throughout the drive it should cool off because i think we're going to end this thing after the sun goes down so yep just starting out rear wheel steering making it super easy to maneuver around all of this traffic and to squeeze out onto the road. The weird shaped steering wheel is not, not the best. But uh, yeah, let's head out onto I-25. One pedal driving, super smooth car. Probably the quietest car I've ever been in. Uh, and it only has single pane glass, which is just amazing. So I don't know how they do it. We got the live stream guys rocking with us at the moment, pulling out of the charging station. 
just being gentle on it. You can see we're in efficient mode. Climate control is set. No massaging seat, no air conditioned seat, just per the testing procedures. Let's make sure that the headlights are, yep, on automatic, which they are. It's also an automatic high beam function, which I could turn on later if it gets dark. And one pedal driving all the way to a stop. Take a look, this uh, truck in front of us is from Chihuahua, Mexico. Pretty neat. And you can see the head-up display there. I can also change what's in the head-up display by coming over here and putting on my assisted driving view. And then you can see vaguely, it's hard with the white truck there, all of the driver assistance stuff right here in the head-up display, which is pretty nice. So locking it in, we got our content set up with all the driver assistance on all the screens. And but what we'll do is as soon as we can go, we'll hit 70 miles an hour by the end of the on-ramp lock it in, confirm the speed with a GPS device, and then start the test. Getting up to speed now, looks like we just have to go around a couple cars. We're gonna get it up to 70 miles an hour. Boom, there we go, locked in at 70, assisted driving activated, and then the IX will do lane centering, automatic lane changes. When you have a navigation input in, it'll even take the exit for you, similar to navigate on autopilot and uh, I believe a capacitive wheel and eye tracking. This thing's got a lot of driver assistance tech in it. And um, yeah, so let's take a look at the lane change. Gonna click it over now. It's doing everything all on its own. Wow, really nice. This is one of the loudest stretches of pavement ever I've been on and it's so quiet in here. I can feel we're lowered down in efficiency mode, but the car's still very comfortable. Anyway, we got a lot of miles to munch right here. I'm gonna check the speed and I'll check in with you throughout the drive. Just check the speed. It looks like 71 miles an hour is going to be 70 miles per hour GPS. So you'll see 114 kmh, kph, or 71 miles an hour up on the screen. And we got a loop style test to do. Man, it's really quiet in here on very loud roads. This is crazy. And here we are about to cross into the great state of Wyoming. Look at that, everyone taking photos by the signs. Driver assistance has been amazing, just sitting at 71 miles an hour. 92% remaining, pretty good, and an average of 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour so far on the hard stretch. Again, we always have a bit of a climb at the beginning, so this is not an indication for the round trip values, but it is showing me that IX could be surprisingly efficient as it starts to level out. I also realized that this number right here is not the kilowatt hours used, this is the kilowatt hours regen which I think is a bit of a shame. We're just gonna indicate a pass around this truck. We don't want any aero benefit and there's no one coming up behind. So we'll pop here in the left lane and go for a slow pass of the Swift truck. You always need to be careful around Swift trucks. They're notoriously the worst drivers out there. And uh, I'm sure most of them are great, but they do just have a million crash videos of Swift trucks. And we sort of say, sure wish I finished training is what Swift stands for. <laughs> And welcome into Nebraska. Because we had a little bit of a, a elevation drop leaving Cheyenne, you, you guys will not believe this. We are at 79% state of charge and it's still predicting 292 miles. What the heck? I'll of course check in at 75% as usual, but just an insane amount of range, at least indicated here. And it's not that, you know, it's not that cold out. It's 94, 95 degrees out pretty crazy how far this thing is going. And welcome to the middle of Nebraska for the 75% state of charge update. 275 miles predicted and we have traveled 3.1 or excuse me we have traveled about 85 miles and 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour is our average. Again this is just an indication we've only gone in one direction but 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour is crazy for something this big. I'm trying to think our e-tron does mid to low twos, mid twos at best. And this is like what a Ionic 5 would get. And that's a much smaller car with much smaller wheels. I think BMW's figured out how to make their cars really efficient. And uh, man, maybe waiting to go hard into EVs after the i3 program actually turned out to be a pretty good, a pretty good uh, situation for them. I don't know, hard to say. Maybe we'll have that debate on the Out of Spec podcast. But for now, we got some driving to do. And we are just coming up on our exit up ahead, I think is the one we're going to take. 
we have, wow, this screen doesn't actually make these lines in real life, but we're at 58% state of charge, 203 miles left projecting. I was just talking to Alyssa, our e-tron on the highway at least never shows even 200 miles at 100%. <laughs> and so I think we're gonna take exit 69 make the loop and head back. So right now I have it in adaptive regen, which is really interesting. So it basically lets the car coast as much as possible. And then when we come across an object, it'll actually apply regen. Or when I hit the brake pedal, you'll see we go in here and you'll see our regen counter going up. A great test because we barely regened anything this test. That's what we wanna see, just consistent power output. You're looking at the typical Nebraskan traffic jam here. Oh man. Just, I can't imagine how hard it would be to commute to work with this much traffic here. And um, yep, 58% looping around. What we'll do is we'll get back closer to the charging station and do more loops down on I-25 that way. Uh, but let's bang a left over here, use the rear wheel steering to get onto the highway. This car is so agile at low speed with rear wheel steering for being this big. And I actually took a huge rock hit. Like my left ear is still ringing. I took a huge rock hit and uh, it was so loud, the loudest rock hit I've ever seen, but I can't see the crack anywhere. So when we get out, we have to look because there's no way this windshield is strong enough not to just explode with this truck that just sent a grenade of a rock at the car. Um, I mean, unless this is just the strongest windshield in existence, but I've really examined every square inch. I can't see any damage. We'll have to take a look, but wow, that was just like a bam, and then just ringing in my ear like a bomb went off. It's crazy. So um, yeah, we'll just keep on moving 58%. I'll update you when we get to 50% state of charge, but holy smokes, this thing is just going and going and going. My mistake, I missed the 50% uh, state of charge. We're actually at 49, we just dipped down. As soon as I looked, it went from 50 to 49. Like, oh no, um, 90 degrees Fahrenheit outside, staying consistently warm, I would say. Still 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. We've made our loop. We're two hours and 31 minutes into this thing. We've traveled 170.9 miles and the car is predicting another 170 miles to go. How about that for a pretty even guesso meter, I would say, uh, 170 on either end and uh, yeah, 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. I am shocked by the efficiency. They said the M60, this thing should go 274 miles on a charge on the EPA cycle. Well, what, what kind of EPA cycle did they run? Um, holy smokes, this thing is just cruising. What a car, what a car. And now I've ended the live stream, so I've had a chance to crank up the Bowers and Wilkins sound system. What a sound system. Wow, wow, I cannot wait to road trip this thing out to San Diego. I Look, I agree, the front end is not pretty, but everything else about this car, except maybe the charging speed peak, 195 kilowatts, livable, not class leading is truly insane. Truly insane car. Wow. It just does the driving thing as it should. It's a BMW. And guess what? It's like BMW's back, finally. I'm really, really loving the iX. Well, dang, I was spending too much time looking at that sunset and I missed 25%. What good am I as an EV presenter if I can't even do my basic job normally? I just need to put the camera at the screen when it hits these percentage points. Anyway, 75 miles remaining. You can see the uh, eye tracking, one, two, three different sensor locations. Uh, it definitely knows when you look away from the road. Let's take a look as to our data. So far, we've driven 244 miles with 24% left. Are you kidding me? This thing is an SUV. It only has 105 kilowatt hours usable. This is insane. Three miles per kilowatt hour as we make the climb back into Cheyenne. My guess is we'll see 3.1 at the end of this. I think that's where this thing's gonna end. Just my guess. Temperature dropping now quite quickly now that the sun is down 80 degrees Fahrenheit outside. And wow, just an absolute beautiful sky as we come into Cheyenne, Wyoming and um, automatic lane change, doing its thing. I'm so impressed with the driver assistance. It didn't love the direct sunlight. There was a few minutes where it wouldn't activate and now it's totally fine. It was just when the 
the sun was blaring straight at the car, which is pretty typical. Oh wait, you gotta go, I'll show you how the lane change works. You can't go all the way on the signal. So we'll let it lock back on steering. I know that because that's green. And then you just tap the turn signal up and you gotta touch the steering wheel and now it's doing the thing. Sweet, it's pretty aggressive lane change. It's like, uh, moves over. It's got some, got some confidence in its lane changes. The mountains are just starting to come into view. The sun is setting behind the train over there. We got the good music blasting on the Bowers and Wilkins. Just a freaking mega day. And here we go, popping off of I-80 and about to go back onto I-25, heading south, regening here. This is all the adaptive regen. You saw before, last time we were in drive, the car just coasted, but because this one's in front of us, it actually hit the regen. Now we're back to coasting. I haven't touched the throttle. Really smart system. A lot of cars have this. Our e-tron has it. Uh, the eGMP cars have it. I'm trying to think what else does. Mm, those are the two that come to mind at least. I know others do. And uh, yeah, just awesome in the corners. I can't wait to do the full driving review of this car. Maybe I'll shoot that tomorrow because all the press materials say this thing rips. I shredded it around a couple off ramps and even I was like, oh damn, this thing has got some got some suspension to it and some rear motor for some power on oversteer. I was pretty impressed. So let's get it back up to 71 miles an hour and locked in. There we go. 71 and cruising down now the last 20% of the battery. This is where it gets interesting, of course. So let's go back to our starting point, see what the car is predicting in terms of range. My guess is actually not too far off of 63 miles. We'll see, because we just had to do the climb and now we'll get better efficiency on the way down. But uh, time will tell. I'm really looking forward to seeing. I know I said that a lot, but I'm just so curious and really just so blown away by this car because we must have gone close to the EPA mileage by now, 256. Yeah, and in only about 15 minutes, we'll pass the 274, so 20 minutes or so. And that's what the car's rated for. We are gonna smoke the EPA. And we are just passing the exit from where we started. What did I say? 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour and right on the money. Nice. I know what this route does to cars, but holy smokes, this is crazy efficient for the size. And uh, we still have 14% remaining, another 50 miles. So we're gonna do some looping around, but we're gonna go down a few exits before we flip back around. As long as we start and end at the same point, it doesn't really matter the roads we take as long as there's not major wind or elevation. It's about as good as we can get in the real world. The IX has been popping up various warnings and I believe we're on our final highway leg. We're at 3% state of charge, surprisingly, predicting 12 miles of range. I think it's a bit optimistic, but this just popped up and it said after stopping for a long period of time, the current main range may be reduced significantly due to the high voltage battery cooling down. And we always talk about temperature having a huge effect on voltage and available battery capacity. And uh, I think it's great that BMW is super transparent about what happens, you know, with, with temperature. Now it's still warm out 76 degrees, but the battery pack is much warmer than ambient at the moment, which means we're really able to stretch and get pretty much everything out of it. So I think this is our last highway run to percent state of charge will run the battery down on the side roads of course to zero but I think we maximized every last drop of highway driving that we could with really good conditions today and the IX obviously as you know has smoked the EPA range I'll give you the official number when we pull off the highway up ahead as to how far we've gone at 70 miles an hour constant and then of course I'll give you uh, the full range number once we run the uh, battery down. It's still pretty close to highway speeds between 50 and 60 miles an hour. We are just about to take our exit. You can see we have a slight power cut over here. It's just coming off at 2% state of charge. 2% state of charge, just kicked it off 70 miles an hour. 330.7 miles of consistent 70 mile an hour driving. I knew this thing would go far. I didn't know it would go anywhere near this far. This is uh, EPA range for the 50, not even the M60, and that's combined. We just did this highway. So now what we're gonna do is sort of regen through the stoplight, and we are going to run this battery down 
on the side roads around the uh, station from where we started. Now I've never run the IX completely out of charge before, so I'm gonna be super vigilant with all the gauges, try and rely on all the information that it has. I'm also going to try and use some of the cues. I've owned a few BMW i3s in the past and uh, try and use some of their knowledge from the i3 days to see if their engineering is the same here. I will say, you know, holding high performance to low battery states of charge is something they did very well in the i3 and here as well. Again, still over 75% of available power at 2% state of charge. Adaptive regen working well there. As soon as that car turned left, it actually let me coast a little bit more. So that's where we need to end up. And then you guys know the drill. We're running this thing until it says zero, zero. I'm surprised it says eight miles remaining though. What the heck? Sometimes the I3 would just die for the last few miles. So we're just gonna keep it close to here, but uh, we're not in turtle mode yet. So let's get the speed up to 55, 60, 65 miles an hour on these back roads once we get out of this little town and see how far we can go. And just shortly after that clip, turtle mode kicked on and now our power limitation has gone yellow, but all signs indicate to a, um, I would say more range left in this thing. Now it is important to remember, this is a fresh car. I full charged it maybe for the first time in its life today. And this is probably the lowest the battery pack has ever been. So it may not be totally calibrated, but that's why I'm doing this on back roads, not on the highway. If the car does run out, it's not the end of the world. We can always call the Rivian with a tow strap to pull us into the charging station. And there's plenty of shoulder room here. So we're out of traffic. You know, this is scientific as real world as we can get. That means we go until the cars pretty much don't want to go anymore. But it also means don't try this at home. I'm not at home. So it's totally okay that I'm doing it here. Oncoming traffic. Uh, just kidding. This is actually just the little side road here. So we have 1% state of charge, turtle mode, of course, and the car is still predicting four miles remaining. You can see our um, energy uh, limitation is creeping down normally and uh, consistently. That's what we've seen from I3. And so, yeah, I think I'm going to do one more loop on this little road and that should pull us in pretty accurately close to low, but again, still doing somewhat highway speeds. I was doing 65 when we hit uh, deep into 1%. I just dropped it to 55 miles an hour. And of course, I'm going to have to go a little bit slower till we loop around, but I think I'm going to make a U-turn here and go back up to that exit because yeah, I mean, we're not out of juice yet. So let's keep going until we're out. Nice Model 3 performance in front of us there. Well, this is getting a little bit spicy. We have one mile of range remaining, and I'd say we have a little bit more than one mile to go to get to the charger. Uh, you can see our power meter has cut down to less than 50% now, and now it's all about just making it back to the charger. The nice thing about the iX is there's very little, it, it seems rolling resistance. It's quite aerodynamic. So like when this thing dies, it just coasts, or I should say when I put it in neutral, it's pretty impressive, especially considering it's the M60 with the 22 inch wheels. So 0% state of charge now, one mile remaining. This is pretty much it. We're gonna maintain as much speed as we can getting over to the charger and let's hope we can coast on in. We have zero, zero miles now. Yep, I think we may have timed this perfectly. Let's just keep it moving as much as possible on the way to the charging station. Well, I'm carrying quite a bit of speed here. Forgive the camera quality with a little bit of the fogging up. I think that it shut the air conditioning off. You can see we're just coasting in zero miles dash dash pretty sure if I can just rip into the parking lot, we'll be totally fine. I just need enough energy to back into the charger. So coming on in quite hot. So we've definitely made it back to the charger. It's given me some juice. Nice. Love it. And so I don't think we were going to be able to quite hit 340 miles, but we did 399. No, wait, sorry. 339. Let's back it into the charger right here. Boop, into reverse. There we go, that's the right camera. I was like, whoa, that's definitely not behind us. Backing it in, perfect, typical out of spec arrival. And brakes, into park. Engine power, reduced charge, range is out. Uh, there is a little bit more left in there, no question. There might be another 500 watt hours or a kilowatt hour or so. It definitely is not dead. And especially regening gave us back a little bit. So. I would say we could get another mile out of it, but it's not going to make a big difference. 339.1 miles. We regened only three kilowatt hours, which was great because that shows we really spent a lot of time just on the highway as the test should be. It was five hours of driving on one charge. That's crazy. 
and 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Pretty impressive. Let's get this thing charging and fill it up. And now we have made it, of course, to the charger. I've plugged in and we are charging and delivering juice. Only 36 kilowatts, it's ramping up. Low voltage and this only does 200 amps, of course, so it's not gonna give us too, too much. But hey, look at that, 67 kilowatts on plug-in, not the end of the world. This is a pretty high voltage 400 volt situation. I wanna say it's like 430 nominal, 440. Anyway, just can't believe the range of this thing. It just kept going and going and going. Well, there you have it, the iX, the worst range iX, beating the most efficient iX's EPA range. I wanna say that that most efficient range, I think is 330 miles, if you get the aero wheels in the 50, and we just did almost 340 miles with the performance motor on the 22 inch wheels that don't get more range than the 21s because different wheels for the M60, I guess, I don't know. That doesn't make sense. None of this makes sense. None of this makes sense. But what a way to spend time. The sound system is truly incredible. From when I got it to now, I can hear it's broken in. It's really kicking. Pretty amazing. It has this 4D surround system that the Germans are doing where it shakes the seats. I don't really like that so much, so I turned that off. But the sound system itself, the clarity, the depth. We have an amazing sound system in our e-tron as well, also by Bowers and Wilkins. And I would say that's a warmer quality, more bass heavy, perfect for rap music in the e-tron. This is just more of a studio listening experience and you can change the character of it, but I find just sort of very reference quality audio, very impressed with this car. And um, yeah, I just can't believe how freaking far it goes. That's just mind blowing really truly mind-blowing so there you have it 339 miles on a charge i know it would do 340 in our test if i could just do some loops around but close enough i mean you know we, we go until it dies and that was pretty much dead i don't think we'd get much past 340 miles but um, there you go the bmw ix m60 is a range monster i can't wait to test the 50 perhaps we can ask bmw to send one of those out here at some point but there you go. Thanks again for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. Plenty more to do with this car. Driving dynamics test, comparison to e-tron and Model X, maybe EQS if I can swing it, EQS SUV, but I don't think that's going to be possible. And um, I have seen some prototypes around here in Colorado. Anyway, see you on another one soon. Bye-bye.